it does upset you. Um, and I do, um, I, having written one novel and having that bit of experience under my belt, I now re I'm beginning to realize that actually there's a very big difference between publishing and writing. Writing involves the writer and his text. Publishing involves selling the book. It involves getting the, the book out in the public domain. It involves getting the book reviewed. And that doesn't really relate to the writing experience. So no matter what anyone says about my book, I still have to, to sit down and write my third novel. So if the review's bad, it'll throw me off track for a few days. And if the, if the review's good, it doesn't mean that I'm a better writer. I still have to confront the next novel and confront the same difficulties as I've always had. So I'm just trying to keep the, the reviews at arm's length at the moment. Maybe I'll read, I'm having them collect, collated for me and then I'll read them sometime in the future. Okay, the, the other thing that comes out really strongly in the book is memory or the lack of it. And I was just sort of wondering where that was coming from because a lot of, you know, when you're a certain age, you sort of try to recollect that moment in your childhood and you just can't seem to remember it anymore. I guess, for me, memory is a very important thing. Um, I, I, I spent half a year in London, at least half a year in London. Um, and so for me, my, my connection to Malaysia is, is largely, although I go to Malaysia quite often, um, when I think of Malaysia, it's largely to do with childhood images, because I think the memories of childhood are, are strongest in all of us. Um, and somehow the, the, the experience of being in voluntary exile, as it were, means that certain things like memory play a very strong role in my writing. What about finding your way home? Because that is something that comes across very strongly in actually both your books. So really, I mean, you know, there's, there's this whole sense of trying to find home wherever that is. And considering we live in a world where everybody's sort of traveling and you know, you, you could say Singapore is home or India is home. Yeah. You know, it's really, yeah, exactly. You know, it, it, I think most people in this room will identify with that with that issue, you know, the, the question of where home is. Um, we live in such a globalized world, and certainly people of our generation would have been born into a world where boundaries no longer meant what they did 50 years prior to our, to, to, to our birth. So um, the whole notion of hope is very important to me. It, uh, I, was, I was born in Taiwan um, of Malaysian parents. My parents were working there. We only spent a couple of years there, so I, I really have no memory of, of Taipei. But I, I think the, the very experience of having been born abroad meant that every single time I had to fill in a form at school and it said place of birth, I mean, on my passport, it said place of birth, Taiwan, exposed me to comment. From um, so, you know, Malaysian immigration, you know, Malaysian passport said place of birth Taiwan, so everyone just assumes that I must have been an immigrant. But in fact, with parents who come from really rural Malaysia, I feel very, very grounded and attached to Malaysia. Um, and having that kind of split personality from a, from a very early age made me realize that um, you know, home is a very, very, it's a very important thing. Not just to me, but for lots of us.